Quit sweating. <clears throat> You're in a game like that, it gets at time, I guess the words be a little bit stressful and then it all pours out at the end. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, congratulate LSU on an unbelievable season. Um, obviously, LSU is LSU. I've known Jay a, a long time um, just from coaching and gotten to know him and have a lot of respect for what he's done. And obviously, at Arizona, then at LSU. and. That's a good team. That's a really good team. And uh, I mean, that's what it was supposed to be about. I told our guys this morning, this is why you come to UNC, you know, to play a game like this, elimination game, championship game, winner take all for a regional championship. But I did remind them we were at home and, uh, you know, I feel like we had some of that Bosch magic tonight. And a lot of that was our crowd. I, I don't know if I've ever I've been here a long time. When AMAC got that hit, that might be the loudest I've ever heard. Boschmer Stadium, and that's that's just something that really makes me smile. The thing that makes me smile the most is the look on these guys' face faces. Uh, it's a special group, so I'm most proud of our team finding a way to, to win this region. Coach, you've been preaching the 27 out mindset the entire season, but how about your team playing all 30 today and needing all 30? Man, I know. I was like, who's going to play where? Um, you know, we went for it there, putting French in in the eighth, and uh, it's just not surprising. I mean, you know, anything can happen in this game, but these guys, like, they, they can tell you more than I can tell you. It's the mark of this team. Uh, they'll be in here tomorrow, and they'll be right back, driven and focused and getting after it, but they've done it all year. And, you know, you also have to give, uh, what's his name? Um, who came in for them? That Helmers. I mean, he was he was really good. So our pitching kept us there and gave us that shot. So these guys, they're you know they're going to play until that last out is made. We just had to play a little more to, to finish it off. Coach, all weekend long, the bottom of your lineup was really doing work with Gavin, Colby, and Alex, and they all three had huge hits tonight. What what does that mean to you to see your seven, eight, nine hitters, you know, keep 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 the line moving? Basically? I mean, it's it's that's why our lineup's so good. Um, We've got speed distributed, power distributed, uh, right, left, right, left, throughout. Um, and that can be hard. I was a pitching coach a long time. It's hard to make decisions pitching-wise. You go to a lefty, you go to a righty. Um, and these two guys, obviously, you know, you got one. I have a soft spot uh, for a Division three guy right here. Um, and then Colby Wilkerson, you know, uh, Coach Weir saw Colby first. And he said, I really think this kid can play shortstop. And I went to watch him. And uh, Colby will tell you, a lot of people – Told him he's probably never going to play at UNC when he came here, and uh, that's what makes college baseball so awesome. But these guys have been really good for us all year, and they've done a really good job of, of lengthening the order and getting on for Honeycutt, Cook, Harbor, and Denofre, and all those guys. Alex, in the 10th, when you guys took the lead, you know, it all came with two outs, and I guess Castanazzi's drive sort of started the whole thing there. I mean, did that, when that, when the guy didn't come down with the catch, did, Y'all start thinking, hey, you know, something might happen for us here. Can you just sort of take us through that inning? Yeah, I mean, I think any inning, you know, we think that we have a chance to score and a chance of putting pressure on the pitcher. And, I mean, obviously with that inning with Johnny getting on, you know, obviously everybody in the dugout was pulling for Johnny. Everybody's been pulling for each other all year long. But, you know, he got that hit and, you know, everything started turning and everybody was like, all right, you know, we, we got a real chance to score here and, you know, let's put them away. And you're a bat, if you don't mind. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, all weekend, you know, I was kind of getting beat with the sliders facing lefties. And, you know, I kind of figured that I was going to get a couple. And, you know, he couldn't really land them. And he beat me with a couple of fastballs early in the count. So when it got to 3-2, I kind of just sold out for fastball and told myself, you know, he's throwing 96. I'm not going to let myself get beat by a fastball here. So, you know, I just jumped on it and luckily hit it up the middle. Dalton, you've been a work through this weekend, third outing of the weekend for you. What did it mean you have to have the ball in your hand and close this one out? I mean, it meant, it meant a lot to me. Uh, sitting on my freshman year with injury and then coming back last year. And then this year has just been a special year, I feel like, for this pitching staff, uh, working with these coaches. And I mean, this program has got a rich history and you want to keep that going. So it's meant the world to me. Scott, you finish touch on? I mean, <clears throat> he's a horse. I mean, you know. And it, yesterday's game, you know, we, we had a plan and uh, 
you know, unless it got really close, we didn't want to use certain guys because we feel like they could lengthen out. They work so hard. And uh, that's a credit to Coach Allen, Coach Gaines, for managing the pitching staff so well all year so you can have a guy like DeCaro come back and, and throw off 60 pitches and then Matthias and Pence. Um, and, you know, Dalton is able to do that because he is just a blue-collar, hard-working kid. I mean, you look at him, he's gotten bigger, he's gotten stronger. And you don't recover if you don't get addicted to that weight room. And that kid, uh, you know, lucky to have him here, that's for sure. And I saw him go through the injury. And to see him work so hard to come back has been really, really cool for me. Don't, don't work with 117 pitches in three appearances. How are you able to keep that fastball going and keep your stuff going with that much work? Just staying ready. Uh, stretching, like Coach said, just going in after the games, doing my post, um, just doing everything I can off the field to put my body in the best position possible to go out the next day. What are your emotions when you got that last out? There's been a couple of games in the last couple of weeks where you got the last strike and it doesn't happen and to get it tonight. I mean, it was the best feeling I've felt in the world, probably. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was. Um, it's just, I wasn't feeling anything in that moment. It was great. Pat. Uh, for Alex and Colby, um, Coach Slidebot, you know, the reason you guys come here is, is to play in games like this. I mean, you guys come through in the clutch. Can you, can you describe what that was like for you? Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, obviously in that inning before that, you know, or maybe two innings, I don't, I don't know what inning it was where I didn't get the bunt down. You know, I came back in the dugout and all the guys were like, you know, Colby's going to pick you up, Colby's going to pick you up. And, you know, he came through and then they were saying, you know, you're going to have another big at bat. And they were right. And I mean, the emotions just insane. You know, you can't feel anything better than that. Yeah, I mean, that's a great game. And, you know, we wouldn't even be in that situation if it wasn't for our pitchers. Um, I mean, they've been throwing a lot of innings lately and just up there battling and just getting out and getting out. And this guy right here made about. 15 plays tonight at second base. They were peppering him all night. He was making plays. <laughs> the, other, the other day, he called him barehanded. No one even knows. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, that was just awesome. And once you get in the box, you're not, you're not worried about anything else but just trying to make your teammates happy at the end of the day and just get up there and compete. And I'm just so thankful to be here. And like Coach said, we got a lot of guys in that locker, and they're just, just really thankful and, and want to work hard for the other guy beside them, and, and we've been able to do that a lot this year. Uh, this is one for Colby and Alex. If you just think about sort of the, the path through this whole regional, I mean, Friday night, good Lord, you know, Gallagher's Grand Slam to win it in advance on Saturday with, with the Hummers and then tonight. I mean, can you wrap your head around everything that was required to, to win this thing? Yeah, like I, like I kind of touched on a little bit, it's just a, a team effort, you know and just a battle. Every game was a battle. We were in every pitch. Even if something got our way, it was just the next pitch, next pitch, and the next guy's going to get the job done. It, it never stopped. And we got all the way to the ninth inning, and it just happened for us. And that's a little bit of magic, and it was awesome. I think, I think tonight's game was perfect. It showed, you know, how much of a team we are. I mean, we used pretty much every single guy we have on that roster, you know. And everybody showed up, so I mean, it was just awesome to see. Uh, Coach, in the <coughs> campaign, you mentioned earlier the all the substitutions you have to make with the pinch hitters and the pinch runners. I mean, where where does this game rank among the most difficult and challenging that you've had to manage? You know, um, we talked before the game today about you know you gotta you gotta be aggressive and. You know, I guess the, the nicest way to say it is you got to have some kahuna sometime. You can't be afraid to be the hero or the goat. Uh, and, you know, I just feel like we need to go for it. The game was tight. Um, I feel like our pitchers were throwing it well, but we had to find a way to tie the game. I feel like if we could tie the game, uh, we could find a way, you know, because if you don't tie it, the game's over. Um, so and that's why we ran French, you know, but then obviously in your mind, you're like, dang, it'd be nice to have Harbor up right here. And, uh, you know, and then, and then we went for him and put Vandy in, and I just told Gavin, you're playing first base and figure it out. <laughs> uh, but he's worked over there. He's, he's, he's a utility player. He was excited about it. Um, 
But these guys, I mean, the players make the coach look good. I mean, 99% of the time, and the coaches get too, way too much credit because I've been doing it long enough to know that you can be an unbelievable coach if you don't have good players. You're, you're not going to be an unbelievable coach very long. So it worked out in our favor. What, what made it so awesome for me was because of the moves, some guys who had played – like a Johnny and a Vandy, they were in there in the biggest moments, and Johnny came through. And then you got Haskin, who, you know, he's like he's like our grandpa on the team. Like he's a one year guy, but that kid's special. Like he is a leader, and he has helped Luke Stevenson a ton. And to see him in there at the end too, that was that was cool. And there was no hesitation from Gavin on playing first. No, heck no. Um, I mean, he we worked him there, and he's done it before. Uh, you know, the the hardest decision was. Thought about hitting Vanderbrake there for Haskin. Um, we've worked really hard uh, working with Johnny at being our third catcher. Um, but we decided we would stick with, with Haskin. <laughs> Dalton, you get that final strike out, you, you know, throw your glove down to the side and everyone's mobbing you. Have you been able to find that glove? Yeah, I found it. I found that at the end. I had to go back and try to search through some feet. Did someone give it to you or did you see it laying on the Nah, I saw it on Terry. <laughs> Probably taking a deep breath like me because it, it was actually fly out. I was like, man, please stay in the park. And then I saw Van, I mean Vance and made me feel a little better. Scott, you had, I mean, Colby had talked about it a little bit, touched on the defense, but felt like it was sensational from start to finish, man. What you see from those guys out there that just make play after play? Yeah, these guys, I mean, the whole infield defense. And nobody's talked about our catchers either. Luke, Luke was unbelievable. How about the play Haskin made late, blocking that ball? Our outfield play's been good. And, you know, our first team meeting every fall, I tell the guys, you can't win a championship if you don't pitch and defend. You can't do it. You can't hit your way to Omaha. It's just not going to happen. Um, and you want to have a dynamic offense. But these guys have completely bought into that. They're fundamental. We work on it every single day. Uh, they take pride in their ground balls. We were happy we got to hit on the field today because we said, hey, we're going to do what we've been doing all year set those machines up, take those ground balls. Um, and I've been here a long time, too. These guys, man, that's, a, that's as good of a middle infield as we've ever had here. Coach and Colby, just with Alex there, how crucial is he not just at the plate, but also defensively eight assists today? I mean, yeah, I mean, they, <laughs> if you give that team or us, you know, powerful offenses, extra outs, they capitalize, and these guys don't just – not give extra outs. They grab outs and make tough plays. Coach, I was just going to ask you about Matthew's pitching performance. Uh, you know, four and a half innings today. I think he retired 11 in a row going out. What was working so well for him? Man, he's gotten so much better. Um, here's a kid who went out in the summer ball in his first pitch. He got hit with a line drive on his left wrist, so he didn't get a pitch. We had to catch up. We were laughing about his first day of conditioning coming back. It didn't go so well. Um, but to give the kid credit, he did it, you know, and he hadn't been able to run because of his – remember that day? Um, but, you know, he's always been an ice water kid. Here's a kid that committed to us really early. Um, we've always felt like he's loved the big moment. Again, him not pitching yesterday. But, our, you know, we've, we've really worked – Coach Howell and Coach Gaines, you know, moving Coach Howell to just the pitchers and those two guys working together. It really helped a guy like Maddie understand his pitches. Obviously, he's worked hard. He's throwing harder. But um, because of what we have now at our fingertips back there in our new facility, you can figure things out more than you used to. And that's really helped Maddie learn to throw the fastball up, the cutter down, and add the curveball to it. So um, it's a credit to him, too. I see him back in the weight room with these pitchers. And, uh, you know, Coach Gaines, our pitching coach, he pitched here. And he knows what a good pitching culture is. And he's been determined to get that instilled here. And that's a big credit to him. Yeah, so Colby, uh, I wanted to ask you, and, and I want for you as well, kind of tag on to while you're at bat there, uh, you know, the couple of check swings. That, if you could walk us through all of that, that'd be just kind of good. Yeah, um, sometimes you can kind of see the inning unfolding a little bit, and I, I sat down and just took a deep breath, looked around for a little bit, come up to the plate, and once I got in the box, I wasn't worried. Coach Forbes was, he always gives me a good little look, and like I got confidence in you, and I knew everyone was cheering hard for me, and I just took a deep breath, and man, I just felt like a little kid in that box, man. <laughs> I was ready to go. I wasn't gonna let him beat me with a heater because he was slinging it. Um, and then, you know, just his development as a hitter over the course of four years. You talked about his defense, and obviously that's so critical. But 
uh, gosh, I mean, you know, he comes up in that spot against a big time arm. Yeah. It probably wouldn't happen a couple years ago. Yeah, and, and, and it's a credit to Colby because there's a kid in our program that I've gotten on pretty good. <laughs> it, it, and challenges Colby Wilkerson, especially like, hey, we got to get in that weight room and you got to get bigger and stronger if you want to be a good offensive player. And he went back to switch hitting. Um, but, I mean, he was a, a stream being when he got here, and he's worked really hard in that weight room. Um, and it, and that was fun to see because he couldn't do that. Maybe, I don't know, you know, maybe last year he wasn't quite strong enough. Um, and when those guys, you got to be able to choke up and get that bat head out, and he was able to do it. He's, he's had a lot of big hits for us. Time for two more. Michael, then Adam. Uh, Alex, Coach Forbes was mentioning the, the environment here at the Bosch tonight, you know, the Bosch magic, and how your single was probably the loudest moment that he's heard. I mean, when you get recruited here, you can tour the facility, you can see the stadium, but there's no people in it. I mean, what did this environment mean to you as someone who is coming from a smaller school? Oh, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, there's nothing like it. You know, obviously at a small Division three school, you're playing in front of maybe 100, 200 people max, you know, on all families mainly, you know. Nobody's really getting into it that much. And, I mean, just to hear them tonight, it was, it was incredible. Dalton, did you have a number of pitches in mind for tonight? Like, I through 58. I mean, were you telling yourself, was there a number you were trying to to get to or stay under? And just how did you sort of manage the physical stuff of what you had to get through? Uh, it's, no, not really. Just going pitch for pitch. Um, I mean, he told me yesterday Nolan Ryan threw 259 in a game, so he's good. <laughs> yeah. You didn't tell you that? yeah. No, just staying with it, taking it pitch by pitch. Um, if the game would have kept going and I'd reached the limit, um, I would have had faith in the guys behind me coming out of that bullpen. So I mean, just going pitch for pitch and putting everything into that pitch. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.